Welcome to Peace United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today we continue our worship series called Lift Up, and today we're going to be talking about lifting up our faith. I'm going to invite you this morning just to listen to these beautiful words by Mary Oliver and her poem, Wild Peace. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination calls to you like a wild beast, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. Amen. Our first reading this morning is Psalm 155, or 145. I will extol you, my God, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Holy One, and greatly be praised. God, greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your work to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the frame of your abundant goodness, and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Holy One is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abundant in steadfast love. The Holy One is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Holy One, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power, to make known to all the people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. And our second reading is from Matthew. Pray then this way. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to this time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For the wisdom contained in these holy words, we give thanks. Amen.
friends nowhere to be found, gone. Nothing left but what he carried on his bag and a bottle. How did this happen? And then one day, through the grapevine, he heard about a place called Cafe 458. Folks said that you could get in off the street and have three meals a day if you were willing to be part of an intense recovery program. He figured he could play along with the recovery program if it meant meals and a bed. So he went. Took a leap of faith and walked up Edgewood just around the corner from Ebenezer Baptist. By some miracle, he was invited into the program. After one month, his intention to play along, to get along, disappeared. Slowly, his attitude began to change. He began to trust the people who were facilitating the recovery program. The cliche, let go and let God, began to make some sense. When he celebrated one year of sobriety and graduated from the recovery program at the cafe, he rejoiced, tears streaming down his face. Today, though there have been mess-ups and mistakes, he has 9,125 days sober. A 25-year chip and a trust in a higher power, a recovery process, and a group of people who believed he could come back from the bottom. He fell down. Oh, how he fell. But he fell into strong arms. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. I was just a little girl, the youngest of three. There I was, stacking bales on a big, big truck with my older brother and my dad. It was all fall on the farm, and that meant hauling in bales for the cows for those harsh Saskatchewan winters. It was a lot of work and a lot of trips to the field with the big three-ton truck. My dad would throw bales onto the truck, and my brother and I would stack them neatly in the truck box. Higher and higher they went until it seemed that if I reached my hand high enough, I would almost touch the sky. When the bales were stacked well beyond the size of a three-ton truck my box, my big brother climbed down on his own from the top of the stack of bales. I stayed up to catch the few more bales my dad would throw to complete the load. I looked down. The top of the truck box was awfully far beneath me, and the ground even further down. And still, more bales were placed on top of the stack. One row higher, my dad said. After the last bale was thrown up and I had placed it securely, my dad gave me instructions. <clears throat> Turn around so you're facing the bales. Hold on to the twine and step onto the edge of the bale stack. And I did. Carefully, I turned myself around and grasped hold of that twine, and I held on. Then, with hands outstretched, my dad yelled up one last instruction. Let go, and I'll catch you. And I let go, and I fell down, down, down. And my dad caught me in his arms. Every time. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. 
It is a difficult thing to let go. To let go of the idea you are in control. Oh, that's so difficult. <laughs> to let go of worry that can sideline you. To loosen the tight grasp you have on the notion that you can handle everything that comes your way by yourself if you just think 10 steps ahead. It is a difficult thing to let go and trust someone else. As Christians, as followers of the way of Jesus, our faith in God, who is really beyond all comprehension, is cobbled together by our understanding of who Jesus was and how Jesus lived and of what Jesus taught. Our faith, our trust in God is rooted in our trust in the radical life and teachings of Jesus. And within that faith is an understanding that we find God in the people we encounter. That means our trust in God, who we claim is faithful and steadfastly loving, that trust is realized in our relationships with others. And here's a wild notion. People might actually experience God's presence through us. Here's how the prophet Hosea described it in the 11th chapter of his prophetic book. For I am God. This is when God is like, God's like said, oh my gosh, Israel, you have screwed up so badly. What am I to do? I am so angry. You know, and when the psalmist said, right, uh, God is slow to anger. So if God's angry, you know Israel has done something really, really bad, right? So anyway, so God is really angry. And what am I going to do, right? Like I gave birth to you, all this kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, God says, For I am God, and not human, the Holy One, who is a, is a part of you. I am, God, I am God and not human, the Holy One who is a part of you who is within you. God doesn't give up, you see. God says, I could be all of these things, but I'm not going to because I am part of you. I am within you. We have prayed out the same understanding throughout these last weeks. The prayer spoken first by John Helder Camara. God, don't extinguish the light of your presence within me. God, look through my eyes, listen through my ears, speak through my lips, walk with my feet. God, may my human presence be a reminder, however weak, of your divine presence. Amen. Our faith is not tied to doctrine or creed. It is not defined by fear. It is not bound by rules or traditions created to control and diminish. Our faith is in a loving God who we understand through the life and teachings of Jesus. And we believe or try to believe that we are beloved and precious children of God. We are enough just as we are. And so is everyone else. Thomas Merton says it so well. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself, and the fact that I think that I'm following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that, that, that my desire and all that I have that desire in all I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never lead me to face my perils alone. I will trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone.
Never, never do we need to face our perils alone. We believe God is holding our lives. One last story. Two years ago, there's this quirky church called Peace United Church of Christ. And they made the decision to sell the property on the corner of Plant and Lockwood. It was a difficult decision. There were many tears. There was anger. There was sadness. And on some occasions, and I'm being very generous about that, some, that there's a lot more than some. And on some occasions, a considerable amount of frustration and fear. It was a decision made so that our mission would not end up being the upkeep of the building and instead we could, with more energy and intention, live into our stated mission to follow the life and teachings of Jesus, the radical life and teachings of Jesus. Peace stepped out in faith, trusting that we were doing the right thing. Didn't know the road ahead of us, but we had the desire to do what was right. Two days ago, we sent our application to build affordable housing for senior citizens to the state of Missouri. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> the plan is to keep the sanctuary. The plan is to keep the trees that surround the property and add a few more on the back. The plan is to build 48 to 52 apartments that will be affordable for people who might be forced out of their homes because their fixed incomes cannot keep up with their increased property taxes and upkeep costs of their homes. We're talking about senior citizens here. Peace Place is the proposed name of the development we hope to build on the corner of Plant and Lockwood. We will not know until December if we are awarded the tax credits necessary to create this glimpse of the beloved community. Without those tax credits, we cannot. Once again, we are stepping out in faith with the desire to live out our mission to follow the radical life and teachings of Jesus. I am reminded and will remind you today of the words penned by Christopher Love. They beautifully, they uh, beautifully lift up the faith of this community called Peace United Church of Christ. Come to the edge. We might fall. Come to the edge. It is too high. Come to the edge. And they came. And he pushed. And they God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life, we believe. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life, we believe. Amen. God is holding your life.